Well, hello there, and welcome back to Uncut with KJH. I'm Katie Jane Hughes, a, a celebrity and editorial makeup artist. I'm going to show you a summer proof makeup look. This means how to prep the skin, all the while protecting the skin, and have a long lasting makeup for things like weddings where you're outside, or things like just a day out with your friends, or a date, but you want to wear a full coverage makeup, or you just want it, you want to look glam, and you don't want things to melt. This is the video for you. First and foremost, the only thing that you really need to wear today, in my opinion, is SPF. And this is the La Roche-Posay High Levy 5. I've got a lot on my hands. And then I'm gonna go for my forehead first because that's the area that's gonna get the most of the sun, most likely. And down the nose, ears, just in case I put my hair up, neck, and then what's left goes on the back of my hands. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that's what that was. So I'm just gonna let that chill for a sec. If I want to sort of like hit it with a fan, I can. I have a little fan somewhere on my makeup desk where I um, just sort of sometimes hit my skin with a bit of a fan. This SPF is a greasy product. It's typically a product that's gonna make you a little bit glossier throughout the day, unless you're super, 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 super dry. So I'm gonna go straight in with a full coverage foundation. This is Tante Doll from Lancome. I am going in with the shade 225 Neutral. I'm just gonna go into the palm of my hand with two pumps, place it to one side, grab a small brush. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How's everybody's week going? How's everybody's Sunday? Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful week in Brooklyn. We're having insane weather, it's beautiful. Um, I'm gonna take this brush, it's like a little flat. I need to wash my brushes desperately. Number four, people ask me from Sculpt by Spectrum, people ask me a lot how often I wash my brushes. My personal brushes. I wash them as often as I need to. My set brushes that I use on other people, of course I wash them after every single use because that is disgusting if you don't. When they're your own brushes, I think like unless you're constantly breaking out, unless you're constantly having just issues with the skin or just problems that, you know, mean that you're not ever gonna get through, whatever. Wash your brushes as often as you feel like you should. I wash my personal brushes maybe once a week. Um, that said, if there's a pigment in a brush that I can't get out because it's too dark or too rich, I will wash the brush to be able to use it with something else. So this is the foundation just sort of being gently smeared across the skin and into the forehead there like that. And then using the tip of this brush to sort of get it around the brow. It's a beautiful foundation. Really, really just looks like skin. It's got skincare benefits in it and it also has SPF 35, 25, broad spectrum SPF 25, but that doesn't mean that you should skip SPF, you should wear SPF as well. Um, and then a little bit on the ears, if your ears are tied back, just to consistently connect the colours of the ears and the face, because sometimes the ears are pink and the face is neutral. Um, I forgot whether I said the shade. 225 neutral. So now I'm just gonna step aside the brush for a sec. I'm gonna take my green towel, wipe the rest of the foundation off into my hand because I don't want to have it there. Then I'm gonna take my cream bronzer. This is the Rose Ink Seychelles cream bronzer. I'm gonna go with the um, number four brush from It Cosmetics. Number seven brush, I apologize, from It Cosmetics and just sort of build a little bit of color back in where I've sort of lost it from the base because the base, because I applied it over my entire surface of my face, I've lost a little bit of the natural shadows and dimension on the forehead and maybe in the cheekbones. So I'm bringing those back in and amplifying them slightly. So that's kind of where those are gonna go. I love this cream bronzer. It's definitely a deeper shade, um, but I like just using a little bit of it um, and making it you know, work in the summer months too. Whereas if I went for my winter color all year round that might not work for summer so i think that's just something interesting to think about like if you ever have darker products that are a little bit deeper for you or a little bit richer for you at the moment doesn't mean that you should get rid of them it just means that you can use them differently either lighten them with some foundation product um or you can um you know mix them with stuff so i'm just using this to give myself a little bit of a bronzy glow i wouldn't contour i would i would contour with bronzer but i wouldn't bronze with contour so that's where a lot of people get confused about what the difference is with contour and bronzer. Contour is typically gray. And so not straight up gray, but contour typically has a grayish hue to it. So I think it's important to know, like you wouldn't put something gray really up here unless you were doing some really beautiful, like black and white something. You would use warm kind of tones. 
That said, there's nothing wrong with using contour to sort of shape and shade, because that's really what it's for. Light brings forward, dark takes back. That's the only thing you really need to remember about makeup and what's happening on the face. Um, then I've got my foundation brush back and I'm just going to sort of go in and just re sort of, you know, mess with things. What? We are at five minutes. So I got to where I am right now in five minutes, which is not that long. I'm still very juicy and very dewy. That's going to change. I'm going to go in with a cream bronzer. So a cream blush. So in the summer when it's hot, I want my textures to be a little bit more intense in pigment and texture. That said, you might find that gel staining textures work better for you. And that might also work better for me, but this is just one way to do it. Um, and so I think that um, I like to be quite dewy and balmy in my face. This is Dahlia from Rose Ink. I like to be quite dewy and balmy in my face. Also, because of how wet my skin is right now, this is gonna transfer quite well, um, meaning quite a lot um, if I am not careful. So I'm just being very delicate about how I apply. Um, because the wetness of the skin is going to sort of transfer the um, transfer the product quickly and uh, easily. Let me just make sure I'm on Do Not Disturb because my phone is texting and I want to make sure that it doesn't ring and break up this video because these are uncut, unedited. You get to see the good, the bad and everything in between. So if I just keep reinforcing little bits of product throughout the makeup, I will get longevity out of this. Um, and I'll get sort of balmy, gorgeous, glowy skin all at the same time. And this is my number two brush from uh, KJH Spectrum. And a little across the bridge of the nose is always nice. So this is gonna get placed to one side. Next, I'm gonna do a little bit of primer on the eyes. Shock, horror. This is the um, Hidden Dash Cream Shadow Primer thing. It comes in two shades. I'm really into the concept of this. It's almost like a neutralizer for the eyelid space, but it also is a primer. It's called um, canvas color fluid ultra matte so you can use it to prime or you can just use it as a neutralizer for the eyelid because a lot of us have interesting shades of pink and purple and sometimes blue on the eyelids and if you're deeper skin you might have um darker sort of more taupey beautiful rich colors which i actually love to use as eyeshadow i don't love to use my purple or veiny eyelids as eyeshadow but for deeper skin when there's dark circles present i think it's beautiful to work with it and conceal around it but let those natural tones that exist in the face kind of be part of the face part of the makeup not cancelling it all out um i'm gonna put powder over that because i don't like typically to put eyeshadows directly over this this isn't super super emol super super balmy super super wet but i don't love um so i'm just using the charlotte tilbury powder over the top just to set it before i apply powder this is reinforcing it again and making sure that it's, um, and I'm not gonna powder at the end because I know that I might wanna go back in with more complexion, by the way. So it makes it sure, the powder just makes sure that that priming layer isn't sticky and therefore isn't gonna take any of this in a heavy, heavy way. I'm not gonna do, I actually might do a little under my lash line just to, sh just to show you how. So I'm just now gonna take some on the back of my hand with that same primer. So I'm gonna take a little brush. This is Sculpt by Spectrum number 17 with Ash Holm. And I'm going to take that underneath as well, just to sort of prime that area, brighten that area. Um, and then again, I'm going to powder that area very slightly just to make sure it's not too sticky. Okay, now we've got the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. I haven't decided what shade I'm going to go in with yet, but I think I want to do just like a nice kind of, I'm going to use the powder brush that I powdered with. I'm going to go with that color. I'm attracted to that color today. I'm just going to start tapping this in. Hi, Tarek. Um, I'm filming a YouTube video. I think I already told you that. Packing this in all over the lid. Close to the lash line is important. And just really pack on the color because then you'll get longevity. We're going to blend it after the fact. So I'm just packing it on, packing it on, packing it on. You can take your little spectrum towel or any other towel, buff that brush just to make sure that there's no excess powder in there. And then you can blend with this brush, just little small movements, soft movements. You don't want to pull too hard because you're actually going to then pull around um, the skin and sort of maybe crease the makeup. So I'm just going to lift that little bit of mistake there away. I don't want to crease the makeup by pulling more hard than I need to. And yeah, just packing it on and then I can build another layer. I'm going to just go in with the same shade. 
It's like a beautiful mid sort of brownie peach. And maybe I'll pull it out a little to the side as well. And this is, did I say this? This is a number 14 brush from Spectrum, Sculpt by Spectrum. And then buffing my brush again, I'm just gonna pull and stretch that color out toward the hairline a little bit. Great. Now I'm gonna take a small little, small sort of dense smudgy brush. This is my KJH21. I'm gonna take a little of maybe antique bronze. It's like a mid-tone brown with a little bit of pink in there. I'm just gonna smudge that at the lash line. This might not be dark enough, so I might go in with a darker shade. It isn't dark enough, but I'm gonna match it up. And then I'm gonna pick up a darker shade. I'm gonna pick up Cypress Umber. I'm actually gonna hold a compact for this because I need to be able to see what I'm doing. A little bit here and a little bit here. And I'm gonna then take this under the lash line, just a little bit there, yeah, like a little outer V stitch. And essentially the more that you keep layering on color and product, the more it's gonna get darker and stick. It's like you wanna just completely, just softly, gently tap it in, blend it around and then be nice to some almost define in there as well. Tap it in, blend it around. Now I can actually go in with a slightly bigger brush because I know that I want this to be bigger. So I'm going to go in with a little bigger, um, fluffy number 17. That's the same exact color with the tip of the product. The product has the tip, the tip of the brush has the product in it. I'm just going to sort of get it right where I left off and then bring it up a little and then a little down as well. Same on the other side, start where I left off and then bring it up. Because I want to start where I left off because this is forgiving. If I accidentally imprint too much pigment up here, then it's going to give me a lot of impression up there. And I don't want the impression and the intensity to be there. I want the intensity to be at the lash line. And same goes, just like keep going back to that area where the color is the most intense for you to be able to get a beautiful smooth blend. This color is really reacting well to my eye color. About that. Colors that react well to your eye color typically are things that are like, if you've got light eyes, warm tones work really well against your eye color. And if you've got um, brown eyes, darker eyes, um, jewel tones in my opinion work beautiful, but I do kind of feel that people with um, dark eyes kind of suit everything. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna take my foundation brush. This is a slightly longer video, but maybe that's okay. Maybe you like that, I don't know foundation brush and I'm just going to use the very, this is like a weird angled kind of, um, needs to be cleaned, but it's got like a high point here. So I'm just going to use that high point just to sort of skim around. Do you see the way I've got like a crease here that we don't really like? That's user error, 100%. I'm going to take this brush. I'm just going to sort of maybe tauten the skin just for a second, just to blend that out. Because it was me pulling my skin too tight with the brush. It was me putting too much pressure with the brush and creating a crease in my blend. And so sometimes you just sort of have to, you know, mess with it a little. The skin shouldn't be moving much when you're applying eyeshadow because if it does, then it's gonna potentially um, make creases. Okay, so just with this, just smoothing some of that sort of shine away blending around the eye a little bit. Same here. I probably won't go back in with this brush now for complexion. I would go in with another. But I am actually gonna move on to some lip stuff. Making sure there's not too much balm on my lip. It's very hot in this room. I'm sweating. Um, and I'm gonna use the Vive Muse Aphrodite Lip Liner because it's long wearing and I want long wearing ability. I'm gonna use this as like my color. And if you, obviously if you put lip gloss or lip balm underneath this, you won't get longevity, right? So I've got a little bit of lip balm on there, but not much. And so I want like a little bit of texture to get it to move, but I don't want too much because if I have too much, then it's not gonna stay.
Okay, and then I'll close this up. And just for my sort of preference, I'm going to add a little endless cacao. It just gives you a little cheruby kind of lip pop. Sort of that, and then those two products I would take out with me in my handbag for the rest of the day. Now, before I move on, I'm gonna do mascara. No, I'm not, I'm gonna do mascara very, very end. I'm gonna use a lot of powder now, so I actually like how my base looks. This feels good. I'm gonna take a medium sized brush with the Charlotte Tilbury powder and just really pack in the powder in those areas of the face. I don't worry too much about powder looking powdery on me because I feel like I always just tap in just little bits as I go. And I'm never doing any scruffing, scrubbing motions because you don't want to, you know, disturb what you've already done. So do you see the way I'm just sort of tapping and pulling? Uh, and you could even, and so that's the before and after side. I'm probably going to use a little bit of these. That's after, still dewy, still reflective, but not wet in the T-zone. Probably going to do a little bit of the new Makeup Forever ones as well because they're so, so, so cool. And I actually might use... For longevity another powder so i'm confusing you maybe perhaps a little bit but i wanted to use this powder first because this is close to my skin tone this is much brighter than my skin tone no it isn't i gave it away damn it we're gonna try and see if i can get it to work so this is another makeup forever one which is called the um 1n06 this is the number one from charlotte tilbury 1n06 i'm gonna see if i can get the effect yeah i can okay so i'm taking the puff from this foundation powder this is a foundation powder so this is going to give me more longevity and it's going to give me a much longer wear than I would have had before so I'm just taking a little bit of the powder and I'm just going to go under there and just sort of cut a little like a little bit of a contour same on this side and then I'm going to do a little on the chin a little around the mouth to stop the lipstick from moving this is a Mario trick. And then I'm actually gonna take a small brush because I need a brush for this step. A little dense brush that kind of mimics a puff. I'm just gonna put the powder there. I feel like I wanna be a little brighter under my eyes and this powder is probably gonna get me there. Yeah, okay. And then same here. And then this powder actually is a really great little buffer your eyeshadow any powder is you can use the shadow to the buffer the powder to sort of create contrast okay we're looking good this is a little high but that's okay so then once this all dries and sort of settles in after a moment i can take my big brush back and i can just buff that line away but all the while i still have a nice sort of bit of definition from that placement gonna do a little freckle moment um i do my freckles last when i remember and i do my mascara last when i remember because all the powder that i sort of had floating around is quite important to um not let the powder sort of settle and you see the way this is foundationy because it's got foundation on it i could do one of two things i could put a bit of freckle over it like i just did or i could take a q-tip and gently erase it but I'd rather do a freckle because it gives me more intensity at the same time. Chow 28. I'm not going to do any shimmer on the eye because I feel like this video is really long. And again, maybe that's okay. Somebody asked me the other day, um, I was on a podcast, Breaking Beauty podcast. Um, it's coming out later in the year. Uh, how do you stop mascara transfer on your lids while you're applying your makeup? Look down into a mirror. This is my best tip. It's not my tip. Nothing's mine. You know what I mean? Just want to say that for anybody that thinks that I'm trying to claim something as my own. Nothing is new, really. That's, things can be reinvented, but everything's pretty much been done before. Looking down into a mirror. Hi. I already have one, thank you. Um, looking down into a mirror sort of changes the angle of your eyelashes, therefore making it so that you don't hit your eyelashes on your lid. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. I would probably take my powder out with me um, I wouldn't really take much else other, other than the lip and the powder. Um, but one more little step that I actually like to do is 
apply powder blush over all of this because it just gives me a little bit more pop in the cheek and therefore reinforces it. So it's like if you do a cream version of something first and then a powder version of something second, you will get um, a longer wear out of it based on the fact that you reinforced it with powder. So I'm gonna use the Giorgio Armani number 40, I think. It's the first one I grabbed. Let's hope it works with the rest of the face. Sure, that's perfect. This is number 40 from Giorgio Armani. I'm gonna just stipple that in with the powder brush. The reason why I use my powder brush to stipple in things after the fact is because that little bit of powder that's in there, the translucent or the skin tone colored powder, is actually gonna give me a better blend. Um, so, great. Just really pressing it in. And then just to double check that I blended my lip edge, I'm just gonna take a medium soft fluffy brush and just go there. I am gonna do that shiny powder from Makeup Forever because it's beautiful and I don't wanna add a wet shine to my face right now. Cause again, I want maximum longevity. Um, I'm gonna do this, which is this cool powder from Makeup Forever, which when you twist it, it like deposits product. But you have to have the product flat for it to work. So I'll show you now. So you just, I just pump it and it pumps out like a few bits of different toned powder. There's pink, there's yellow, and there's blue. They have pearl in there. I'm just gonna like smush it into my brush and then just give myself a little bit of a shiny sort of dolphin skin thing. That little bit of blue in there is quite bright. So you have to be aware of not applying too much, but it actually looks really pretty over the lids. It's a great little finisher that's just different from, it's different from like your traditional setting powder. I think it's a nice alternative to a setting powder. Um, it isn't a setting powder, but I could, I would actually apply it here because I think it makes your skin look like silk. Look, so this is it in the T-zone. I'm applying it over my freckles that I just redefined, but anyway. Great. That's it. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. Um, I'm going to be on bikes for the rest of the day today with Tarot and some friends probably. I'm going to go get some lunch and some brunch and some drinks and love you all. Have a great day. I hope this was helpful.